Morning. Welcome to the actualization zone. I am Dr. Robin McKay. I know that most of you know me because you're still some of the OGs, the original gangsters. I know that sounds so weird coming from me in our space, but I just want to welcome you. Today is the second weather report. I gave one last week and you can find that it's in a, it's in text form. So you can find that if you scroll through the the entries in the actualization zone. And if you're with me live, I'd love to say hello to you. Just let me know who you are. I can't see, I'm doing this from StreamYard and I can't see necessarily the, um, the names of the people who are watching live. So if you are, just say who you are in the comments and say hello. If you're watching the recording, let me know that as well. I want to do this every week, this weather report as a gift to all of us, because I think that we've reached a time in the world where it's really important that leaders come together, link arms with each other, come shoulder to shoulder with each other as we, um, as we create this new world that we are most wanting to be a part of. So that's why I'm doing this today. And you will be able to tune in every week to get this information as well. So this morning, it's Monday and it's March 14th. So we've got a new week ahead of us. And for those of you who are just getting to know me, who haven't really been in my space or my sphere for very long, I would say I want to share with you just a couple of things. One is that, you know, that I'm a, I have a PhD in psychology. I worked as a clinical psychologist and a professor at the, at Arizona State University for years before I stepped out on my own in entrepreneurship and went into transformational coaching and uh, executive leadership development. That was years ago. So I'm, I would say I'm a psychologist by training, but what you might not know about me or be fully aware of is that I'm also a clear channel. I am an intuitive. I've been intuitive my whole life. And um, I think that that actually who I am as an intuitive paved the way for me to come into psychology because that was the best place at the time that I could think of to be able to use my unique gifts, talents, and abilities. And, and um, so I'm sharing this with you because as an intuitive first, regardless of what my training is professionally or my education is, as an intuitive first, I just simply have access to an inner knowing, an inner wisdom, uh, I get a really clear sense of things very quickly. I had one teacher describe it this way. She said, when you are intuitive or what I like to use the word is spiritually intelligent, which is beyond even an emotional intelligence, but a spiritually intelligent person is somebody who has the capacity to alter their consciousness in the service of themselves or another person and to use energy tools and technologies in order to bring about real world transformation among you know, their clients, their communities, and, and obviously themselves as well. So I share this with you just kind of to tee this, this weather report up, because what ends up happening when I tune in is that I sort of stream consciousness. It's kind of like being a Wi-Fi and having information coming in and just streaming through or downloading through me and out, through my heart and out my, out my mouth. So I'm sharing this with you because if you've worked with me privately, you know that this is how I work. This is more of a public forum that we're in. And so for some of you, this will be the first time that you're getting to uh, be with me as I'll be doing the, this download for us for the week. Um, some of you will be like, that's how she is in my private coaching sessions. So anyway, the whole idea here is the integration of science and spirit of heart with brain, with logic and intuition. And if you're here in my space, if you're here in the actualization zone, chances are quite good that you yourself have an intuitive or spiritual intelligence as well. You may not be fully using it. You may not have fully understood the extent of your abilities, but if you're here, 
chances are quite good that you have them. So that's something that we are going to be talking about more and more in this space because we've reached a point and we'll just dive into the content now for our session today on the weather report, but we've reached a time when there is so much going on in the world. And there are wars and there are rumors of wars and we are coming out of the pandemic and everybody knows that nothing is the same and yet there continues to be a hope that everything will go back to normal. The energy this week is an amplification energy of a kind of a reminder, if you will, of the fact that the world has changed. And no amount of wishing, hoping, wanting, wondering, keeping our fingers crossed, waiting to see what happens is going to bring the world back to the way it was in, let's say, 2019 or before that. So because we are in this time of great transition, because we are in this time of needing to focus on what we want to create rather than focusing on all the things that are going sideways in this world. Because we are in this time, it is this week especially very important to focus on your heart. Your heart is the place in your system that has the wisdom. It is the place in your system that when it is clear, you're able to make not emotional decisions, but wise decisions, courageous decisions, decisions that are in alignment with who you are as a being who is walking this earth right now, making decisions regarding what your next step is, what your contribution is now and in the future. So this is the week to focus on the heart. And one of the things that Barb and I write about in Smart Girls in the 21st Century is how often talented women, very smart, educated, savvy, gifted women create thorns and shells around our hearts as a mechanism of protection. Protection from betrayal, protection from worry, from fear, and unfortunately, the unintended consequence of creating a shell or thorns or both around your heart is that it's very difficult to access your inner knowing, your inner wisdom. It's very difficult for the eyes of your heart to be able to see what they need to see in order to be able to make those decisions, to advise, to inform, to guide you. So this is the week to Look even behind, look even behind your heart. That's often where we, we hold the, the wounds, the grief, the frustration, the anger, the betrayals, the abandonments. We often hold that behind our hearts, tuck it away there. And unless and until you make a decision to move that, move those memories, move those betrayals, move those abandonments out from behind the heart and back into the light, you're gonna have a very difficult and challenging road ahead of you in being guided by your heart. And of course this makes sense, right? It's like your heart is wounded and needs to be healed. So this is a week, this is the week to do the healing on the heart. And of course that takes time, of course, but it, the time can't start until you start. So that's one thing. Now it doesn't have to be a big deal. It, in other words, it's important, but I don't want you to go into drama about it or anything like that. That's not necessary. Just as examine what's behind there, make a list. And even by virtue of making that list of what's behind there, what have you covered up? What's in the burial ground behind your heart? What's back there? And when you can take those out and examine those either by yourself in a sacred space or with your coach, with your therapist, there's by, by virtue of just examining what's back there, you transform it. You're actually able to see and transform what's behind your heart. And when you do, that transformation then creates a light heart 
heart that's infused with light, but that's also light in terms of weight. And that's when you can begin to really open up your intuition and live from here rather than living solely from your intellect. Because your intellect has diminishing returns at this point. So the weather report this week is all about the heart. It's about paying attention on purpose to what's on the heart, what's in the heart, what's behind the heart. And I think that that's a, that awareness, that understanding of what's back there and being able to start transforming it goes a long way to allowing you to, to create the world that you most want to live in. And the other thing that comes forward this week is that time is short. There is no time to waste in terms of transforming your heart space, but also in terms of just doing your work. There is a rising sense of urgency. The rising sense of urgency doesn't come from a place of fear. It comes from a place of joy and joyful knowing that now is your time. Dan Pink, the author, has written a lot of different books I like some of them. And this is one, I haven't read it yet, but I've seen him talking about it on LinkedIn. It's called, I think it's called The Power of Regret. And he talks about how potent it is to, at the beginning of a project, time travel to the end of the project and look at the project from the end and say to yourself, okay, if I do something, what am I gonna do or don't do that's gonna bring me regret? What are the things that I'm gonna regret if I don't do them? What are the things that I'm gonna regret if I do them? And just by answering that question about what am I gonna regret in the future if I don't take action today? I think that this lights a fire under you in terms of moving the energy, moving your focus, moving your attention into what's next for you. But the time of treading water is done. And anybody who's still treading water or, you know, and barely has their nose above the water line, they're still treading water, but you can't save them, first of all. And it really is just time to, to start swimming again. And if you are swimming, keep swimming. You know, I just, you're welcome for the, the uh, Finding Nemo reference. But there really is no time to waste. And that's the other message. So this week, take care of your heart. No more wasting time. Look at what you might regret in the future if you don't take action on it now and go do those things. And in the comments, I would love to hear from you. What are the things that you're not gonna, at the end of this, at the end of your time on this earth, at the end of this week, at the end of this month, at the end of this year, nobody knows how much time we have left, to be honest. But what are the things that you don't want to regret? Write those in the comments and let's activate those for you. And let us support you as you are pursuing those things that you don't want to regret. All right. Big love for now. If you are not connected with me and via email and you want to be, I really advise that you take the leadership quiz that I have on my website and I'll put the link in the, in the comments as well. But it does have a lot of information about the kind of leader that you are, including and this is very different from any other leadership assessment that you that you get. Um, there's a sole purpose behind that leadership style that we'll share with you in your results. So and that way you can stay connected with me as well. And I'll put the the um, link in the comments or you can just go over to my website, drrobinmckay.com. And there's a pop up window that will take you right to that quiz. So do that and stay in touch. And um Let's see what else I'm getting ready to. I'm so excited about this. I'm getting ready to be launching the McKay Academy of Actualization. That is one of the things that I know for sure that if I don't launch it, I will regret it. If I don't found it, if I will regret it. So I'm going to be talking more and more about that. We'll have some master classes around what that what that academy looks like, how you can participate in it, how you can be a part of the founding class of that actualization academy i'm so excited about that all right so let me know let me know what are you what are you healing that's behind your heart this week and what are the things that you don't want to regret what are those things all right big love
We will see you next week.